welcome to the PML Draft Recap. I'm your host, Joseph Moore, here, and with me I have Matt Kelly. What's up? And Jaden Barr. Hey, guys. How are we? All right. So we are about to discuss each team, uh, rate them on a scale from 1 to 10 in five different categories, double that, and then uh, that'll be the best out of 100. And then we'll be ranking these teams uh, first to 16th. And then uh, we'll we'll decide who we think is going to make playoffs and win the championship or is going to lose out and not make the playoffs. So let's get this thing started. Let's go. First up, we have Morgan's team, the Toronto Tyranitars. He drafted Rillaboom, Torkoal, Toxapex, Ninetales K, Heliolisk, Bell Awesome, Magnazone, Gallade, Noivern, and Mamoswine. One of y'all can go first. I'll let Matt go first. Oh, cool, yeah. Uh, anyone listening, I'm going to preface this, but you know, it's my first time rating all these teams, uh, or any teams really, so take my readings with a grain of salt. Uh, so, uh, Morgan. Uh, let's see. Uh, so looks to be a, a pretty bulky team. Uh, most of his mons have either a defense or a special defense of at least 100. Even his mons that aren't designed to necessarily uh, be like walls. Um, or they're running with like high HP. Um, so overall, I think it's in terms of bulk, uh, pretty bulky team. Um, obviously, you know, you've got uh, Toxpex there. That's going to be... Um, difficult to to get over for for anybody unprepared uh so for bulk i've got a, a rating of eight uh for recovery and support uh i rated him a seven uh, i think that uh, the, you know he's gonna obviously have some recovery with toxapex uh, but he's also got uh heliolis with parabolic charge uh, blossom's got strength sap golly has got drain punch he's got some decent recovery in there um couple of different options you know and, and he's got his bases covered in terms of typing for that as well so uh, i feel like he'd be he'll be decently prepared there uh for speed i have him rated uh seven out of ten as well he does have a few fast mons and the ability to tailwind uh but uh let's see about a third of his mons here let me take a look at my notes um I think won't cooperate here. Uh, about a third of his mons are average or below. Uh, and then, of course, a Blossom is going to be dependent on that sun to, to get that extra speed there, uh, which is, you know, what we, I guess, expect out of a, a T5 pick. Um, for wall breaking, uh, I do have him rated as a, a six. Um, I think that out of all the ratings here, uh, that's going to be his his lowest for me. I think that he's going to run into some issues with wall breaking if he if he doesn't come in prepared. Um, let's see. It would be great if this document would not jump around. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That's uh, what I gave him too. a seven. I gave him a seven. Nice. Uh, I think he's going to end up having to rely on his recovery and his bulk uh, for his team uh, quite a bit uh, to outlast his opponents. Uh, but I do think his team has some great synergy with the the Sunsetters, uh, Blossom, Heliolisk. Um, he's got uh, five, or excuse me, four fire weaknesses uh, to go along with that, though. So he's going to be powering up his, his enemy. So I gave him an overall... Uh, team synergy of, of actually nine which is one of the highest team synergies that i've given uh all adding up to a to a 37 uh for a, a doubled result of what's that 74. that's fair jay did nice. you want to go next yeah i've actually got pretty similar um pretty similar um, reasoning and pretty similar numbers actually um for I won't, go, no, because I won't go across the same things as what Matt, had, Matt has, but for, let's go straight into the numbers. So my, 
the bulk of giving him an eight. I think um, I think I agree with Matt in saying that you know there's things there that are very very bulky, um, and he will be able to use those to his advantage very very well. Um, recovering support, I've actually given him a nine because I think um, Toxapex, uh, Heliolisk, um, the awesome Glade, they've all got those extremely good stab. Um, recovery moves or oh, Blossom and Glade with Giga Drain um, and Glade with the Drain Punch. Tox effects regenerating is just always a problem, doesn't matter who you are. Um, and Rillaboom with his um, grassy terrain will provide that passive healing. So I think that will be really, really useful for him. Um, and with recovery and support, I've given him a nine. And the reason why I've given him a nine is because of that grassy terrain as well. That reducing those that, the effectiveness of those ground type attacks. Um, these it's good for Pokemon like Magnezone. It's good for Pokemon like Heliolisk that are that, and Tox effects even as well because of they're, they're quite frail to those ground types. Oh, Nine Tails there as well. There's quite frail to the ground types. So reducing the effectiveness of ground with the grassy terrain, I think, will be in, almost imperative for him. Um, speed tiers have given have also given him a nine. Um, I think he's got good control over this over the field. Um, he's got Rillaboom with his pro priority um, priority glassy glides. Uh, Blossom with his chlor with the chloroform, not the chloroform, the chlorophyll. Whoops. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a good good number of Pokemon there that can be used as staffers. So, like Mamoswine has also got his priority um, Ice Shard. Um, Heliolisk can be good at Scarf. Um, Noivone is very, very quick. So I think he's got very good control over the speed. Um, wall Breaking, I've given him a 7. Because again, I agree with Matt. Matt Matt's analysis here where he might find a bit of problems with trying to actually physically bust up teams. I, I've used Heliolisk before. I've used him in the sun, I've used him with I've used solo power specs, not as, and he still falls short. Um, for me anyway, he falls short in a lot of the a lot of the strategy that I use. Um, and that's really like, in the draft scenario, you get you you only draft some eight Pokemon, so like, I think I think he might fall short with the with the wall breaking potential there. You got things there like Blossom, you got things there like Rillaboom that can you know, set up but is that enough? Will you be afforded that opportunity to set up? It's a little bit it remains to be seen. And with Team Synergy, um, I think I've been a bit harsh actually. I've given him a seven here for Team Synergy. Um, I think looking back, it's probably a bit harsh. Um, I think um, he's got enough there for the sun to be able to. He's got enough sun setters there to be able to um, to keep the sun up for Blossom to do a thing. Um, same with solar panel or solar power Heliolis. He's got enough there to be able to to work with it. Works hand and glove together with each other very nicely. Um, one thing I will say though is that I feel like this is not this off this office is obviously happened after the draft is done, but I feel like Morgan's done himself a disservice by trading away Torkoal. Um for Mimikyu. I don't think it really adds much value to his team, the uh, Mimikyu. Um, and I think Dusty has done a very, very good job in, in acquiring Torkoal. Yeah, because we're talking about Dusty next. Dusty has a very dusty team, and uh, we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, so my yep. thing with Morgan, uh, I went ahead and gave him a 10 for bulk. He has bulk in every way, every which way you can want it. He has it uh, stall worthy with uh, Toxapex, Magnezone being his two big cores. Toxapex can be fully defensive. Magnezone is very specially defensive. And Mamoswine, also very defensive mod, especially with that thick pad ability uh, available to it. So there's just a bunch of stuff with this team. Uh, Rillaboom's a bulky attacker. Gallade can be a bulky attacker. So he has many options, and mostly on the physical side, but I think that really benefits him in the end. Um, and with uh, the next category, I gave him a... I give him a six for recovery and support. I know he has uh, Toxapex for regeneration and it gets recover. Some of his mods can get roost, but um, he doesn't really have any uh, wish passing ability. 
or any other way to get passive health back on his team other than you know maybe a drain punch on Gallade or something like that but it's also very situational in draft because you're not going to run drain punch every week or you know things of that nature so I felt like uh, recovery it he has options but not so much where it's going to help his team too much like I said uh, mostly tox effects <clears throat> but other than that and uh, his team also comes up short with support I mean you said uh, the grassy terrain which is very beneficial and the big thing is he doesn't really have a way to get up reliable rocks I mean Torkoal was his rocker Mamoswine can be a rocker uh, everything on his team everything else on his team I don't really see putting up stealth rocks getting rid of stealth rocks because uh, then you don't get to run Specs Neuvern. Or then there's nothing on his team that rapid spins. And his screens, he could get up screens mostly with Magnazone. Maybe Gallade if he runs a defensive set like that. But other than that, he really has nothing to protect his team. As bulky as it is, it's still nice to have that uh, added protection to your team in singles. Especially with all the switching. And then uh, C, I gave him a uh, eight for speed tier. Um, it looks like his slowest mon, other than Torkoal and Toxapex, of course, are all about 80 to 85 speed. And that's not too bad, especially with the uh, Tailwind option he can have. I do think he should uh, make room on his team for a Sticky Weber. Um, but even then, even if he doesn't have those things, 80 to 85 speed still doesn't hurt because you could scarf something potentially and uh, make one of those slower mons uh, a threat that way. And then uh, wall breaking, I also gave him a 7. Uh, he has stun to instantly boost most of his special attackers, so that makes them instant threats. <clears throat> but on the uh, physical side, uh, he, I feel like he's going to need to rely on a bunch of uh, choice band life orb options or try to set up with some swords dances or something to actually be able to bust some holes without, you know, passive damage help from like tox effects or toxic spikes or something like that. And uh, without sun, his special attackers could, uh, uh, everything but Neuvern could suffer without the sun. And then uh, lastly, the team synergy, I give him a 9 overall. It, his team does look like it could work well together. It just depends on how much planning he goes into with every week. And we'll see if he can get the job done from there. So what was your overall, um, overall uh, total for Morgan? So, mine was 40. So 40 times 2 is 80. Mine was an 80. And then Matt, your score times two? Uh, be 74. Okay, so let's see what ultimately he gets. 80, 80, 74, divided by three. His score is an official 78. Nice. Which, uh, ain't bad Not bad, Morgan. <clears throat> Alright, now let's go ahead and move on to uh, Dusty's team here. And Jaden will let you lead the way on this one. Alright, sounds good. <clears throat> um, well, as, well, as I was saying before, um, Dusty's done a really, really, really good job in picking up Torkoal. Uh, I think it complements his team perfectly, but obviously we're making the scores based on what was actually um, what was actually drafted, not what was what's happened in the trades since. Um, as it is, He's got a very, very good team. Um, one of the best ones, and I think, and uh, and I noted this down. If he had drafted Torkoal initially, his score would be much, much higher. But as it is, um, I've given him a total of thirty-nine, and the um, the the breakdown numbers is uh, uh, he's got a nine for bulk because he's just a bulky team. It is such a bulky team. He's got. Um, you know, Chansey there. Oh, it is a, it is a standout. You know, special defensive, like 
wall. It will just take special attacks all day. Um, then you've got the support from Scrap is Intimidates. It drops physical attack um, like it's going out of like, like it's no one's business. Um, Spirit Turn is pretty bulky. Mimikyu just takes a hit as it is. It, it's just a it's designed to take a hit. Um, Espeon is pretty specially defensive, um, but also dishes it back. I think um, he has done a very, very good job in drafting this, this team. And I think um, the Niners is fair. Um, recovery and support, I've given him a seven. You know, the, the, the classic, you know, wish passing from Espeon, um, I, I believe Chance he might get wish passing, but that's not a um, intuitive way of playing Chansey. Um, but Chansey's definitely got soft boiled, which will keep him very, very healthy for the long term. Um, but aside from those two big ones, there's not a lot of um, recovery options. Um, but support options that, again, you've got the Scrafty there with the, the Intimidate. Um, and I think Escavalier can also get Stealth Rocks, but again, that's not an entirely intuitive way of playing Escavalier. So I think seven is probably about right. Um, in his VT is, um, I've given him a seven. Um, and I think um, this is one of the ones that I think if Torkoal had been drafted initially, it'd be closer to a ten because that being so would just be a freak. Is a, it is a freak under the sun, but as is, it would be a seven, just because um, he's got a lot of options there. He's got a good, good. Um, Good fast Pokemon, Mimikyu's quite quick, Venusaur is, as it is, quite quick, Charizard is very, very quick, especially once you can Dynamax get those air max airstreams off. Um, I think he's, I think his speed is good, Jalissapod gives the, um, Jalissapod and the Spiritoon with the priority Sucker Punches and Burst Impressions, I think they'll be useful to him. Um, I think where he sort of lacks in a little bit, in, well, he doesn't anymore with Torkoal, but where he do, did lack was that um, there was nothing that was naturally fast enough to be able to get, to like be able to beat something off the line. So it was a, one of those crunch moments where, you, where your opponent is not within priority range, but is as long as you outsped it, you'd be, you'd be fine. He, he might not actually win those off every every time. But now with that Torkoal, you bring in Venusaur and it just kills it. It's fine. Um, as for wall breaking, I've given him an eight. Um, I think, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> Charizard, Venusaur in, in the sun is, well, even without the sun, we're, we're going to be really, really good, really, really good options. Um, Jules Spot hits hard, Escavalier is very, very good. Um, if he manages, if, um, he stu gets stuck in a trick room scenario, Escavalier can go hard. Uh, Spirit Tomb, you know, it's Cynthia, one of Cynthia's Pokemon is there for a reason. It's very, very good. Um, so I think an 8 overall for Wall Breaking. And Team Synergy, I think an 8 as well. Yeah, we, we seem Not to have graded pretty evenly on that one. <clears throat> um... I think the only other thing I've got to say about Dusty's team is that if you want to beat Dusty's team, I think you're just going to have to Dynamax early and hope, to, hope and pray that you're going to that you put it down, put down his team. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen for you. Yeah, because Dusty has some uh, pretty good-looking Dynamax options right now. Um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and go next. Uh, I gave Dusty a 9 for bulk. Um, I mean, he has the ultimate wall in Chansey. But also, the rest of his mons that have bulk can do damage. So I like that he didn't just go hard defensive. He got some bulky mons that could take a lot of hits, like Scrafty, and dish a lot of it out. You know, Spirit Tomb Scrafty, Excavalier. You know, aside from fire moves, they they can he can take a bunch of hits. So his team uh, definitely bulky and gonna be annoying to deal with if you don't have good wall breakers. 
Uh, for recovery and support, I agree. I didn't think he has much outside of Chansey. <clears throat> he does have a few wish options and stuff like that. Uh, Hillbell, of course. But not much options other than that. And uh, in the hazard department, he doesn't really have anything that he drafted that could really set uh, hazards. Now that he got Torko, of course, he's going to be able to get those rocks up and rapid spin. And that adds to team support, but that's not what he drafted. And this is what he has. So I went ahead and gave him a six <clears throat> for recovery and support. And for speed tiers, I did give him a seven. Uh, Dustin actually drafted some speedy mons. And then he also drafted some slower mons that don't fit each other's speed tiers but you know <clears throat> give depending on how he plays them it, it could work out in his benefit but uh yeah that's pretty much it on the speed tiers things like they're, they're a little all over the place but nothing he can't overcome and then with the wall breaking i also give him an eight because he just has pokemon that can just come in and hit hard and especially with the Dynamax option on a few of his mods, uh, it can the game can get carried away in Dusty's favor. And lastly, but not leastly, I gave Dusty a uh, eight in Team Synergy. Teams looks great. It does have uh, repeating types in Psychic, and I think. Uh, but we all know that repeating Psychic type is not a bad thing. Yeah, that's why. I was, <laughs> I was just like, it doesn't seem it'll hurt, but, uh, <clears throat> let me see what You I know, I have a weakness for psychic types. He does have a weakness of, I mean, he does lack, uh, Volt Turn options, but at least he does have Teleport and Chansey and Gardevoir, and I don't know if Spiritomb gets it, but, you know, he does have Turning Out to, yeah, Pivot in and get the momentum going in his favor so it's not terrible but it's not as good as it could be so overall i give him a 76. <clears throat> all right matt yeah oh very close i'll go 78. yeah so uh, uh you know some of you may know dusty and i go way back uh so i think i was a little bit harsher on Dusty just because I didn't want it to seem like favoritism. Um, <laughs> but uh, overall, uh, following the same trend, I uh, gave him a, a nine in bulk, uh, you know, for all the reasons already listed. Um, I think that he he drafted some very bulky mons and it will be annoying to get through those. If you, if you don't come prepared, uh, he's gonna, he's gonna eventually just wear you down. Uh, recovery and support, I give him a seven. Uh, I agree, he's got some recovery options. Um, but not a lot of, of really additional support options. Uh, can't really set up his, you know, now that he has Torkoal, he, he will. But again, as we've mentioned multiple times, uh, he didn't have Torkoal when he drafted. So uh, he just didn't really have anything to set up, like any kind of rocks or anything like that. Um, I know Dusty, though, if he's anticipating it, he might just throw that Espeon in and bounce it back at you. Um, so that's definitely an option. Watch for that. Um, for speed, I actually rated him a, a six on speed. Now, this is something that I think that definitely would increase, as Jaden said, uh, with the Torkoal. Um, but uh, without it, I just I think I see a lot of a, a lot of uh, I don't know d division. I, I think that he has some fast mons and he has some very slow mons. But knowing Dusty, I know how much he hates Trick Room, so. He definitely is probably wanting to come into this being fully prepared for someone trick rooming him. Uh, if he can see it coming, you know, if it's, uh, you know, maybe that person's second, third, fourth battle, uh, he knows that they're going to run trick room, then he's going to come prepared for that. And I think that that person's going to regret running it. Um, for wall breaking, uh, I rated him an eight. Uh, again, I, I, as previously mentioned, I think Venus or Charizard are both going to hit very hard, uh, be able to put, uh, you know, put a lot of holes in, in some uh, enemy teams. Uh, as, as you mentioned, Jaden uh, Scavalier, if he gets in that trick room, he's going to be able to uh, to bust some stuff up. So uh, 
definitely some good options there. Even Gardevoir, uh, it's a good Dynamax option. Um, you know, if you got the right typing to just you know put some holes in the enemy team. Uh, overall, team synergy, I gave him a seven. I think that what his team was lacking is something that he now has is is that uh, that sun center. So um, overall total uh, thirty seven. Uh, coming up to a, a 74 for Dusty. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what that totals out to. And that's an even 76. So that's his overall grade right there. All right. So next up, we have Kenneth. And Kenneth, uh, on bulk, I gave him a 9. Pretty much everything on his team can take it and dish them back. That's the big thing on my uh, that I took from it. Uh, Swampert, obviously, a great Pokemon to have. Uh, Hatterene, able to magic bounce things back. And then, <clears throat> of course, he loves his Bronzong. And he can do all kind of crazy stuff at the beginning of battles. What would y'all give him for it? For bulk, yeah, I rated him a little bit lower in bulk. Uh, I actually gave him a, a seven. Uh, I think that uh, a lot of his mons, like they can be bulky, but you hit them with the right thing, and and they're gonna go down uh, in in a hit or so. Um, I think that uh, he definitely he he's got some great mons on here, and I think if he runs. You know the uh, like the Bronzong, uh, Hatterene, maybe go for like the Trick Room. Um, that's going to give him some some decent bulk to, to outlast his opponents uh, if he sets it up right. What about you, Jay? I I also rated Kenneth seven. Um, I think I disagree with you a little bit, Joe. Swampert is going to be good for his team. I think overall, um, I think this is a bit more relevant in a team synergy component. But if you look at his team, he's got a lot of weaknesses to grass and electric. Like he's got, he's dropped a lot of different water types, and that's not inherently a bad thing. But there's just you got Gyarados there with a four times electric weakness. You got um, Swampert there with four times grass weakness. Um, I think yes, you're right in saying that he's that the Pokemon have a lot of bulk. But I think I tend to agree with Matt a bit more where. You hit him with the right move. You can you can exploit those weak, but you can exploit the weaknesses that they have a bit easier in this team. So I think that's why I've given him a seven on this case. And that's very fair. I just now realized how much electric weakness and no ground type <clears throat> is on his team. So yeah, I can see where you're coming from on that one. Well, you know, other than Swampert being a ground type, but mm. yeah, I can see it. <clears throat> but um, but even... go ahead. I was gonna say, um, just take the examples of like, you, know, you got Pokemon out there that like take um, Heliolisk, right? It's an electric type, but it has access to Grass Knot. Like things can, things that have. There's a lot of Pokemon out there that can run Grass Knot, mm. Jank. There's a lot of Pokemon that can run Thunderbolt. It's just I think he he will find that it is a bit. That yes, he can take a hit, but no, I don't think he will. Um, he will survive many. Yeah, there is a lot of coverage options for Pokemon to deal with them. Mm. <clears throat> so, it makes sense to me as well. Um, but I did give him a 5 for support and recovery. His team is rather slow with only one real speedster in Dragapult. I mean, Swoobat can become kind of a speedster if he Dynamaxes and stuff like that. But the real only speedster on his team is Dragapult, which carries that. Um, Wait, is this recovering support or speed and tears? Speed tears. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I must. Oh, yeah, I wrote it backwards. There we go. So, here we go. Recovery and support. Um, I give him a five. There we go. Uh, he has intimidators. Zong and Swampert are the main supporters. You know, rock screens from Zong, uh, trick room from Hatterene and Bronzong. You know, Swampert can get flip turns out and stuff like that. And I put that he can get a lot of hazards up, but he doesn't really have a way to remove them. I mean, I know Decidueye runs a Defog, 
but he doesn't really have a rapid spinner. I doubt he runs defog on Subet, which is Bronzo can get rapid spin. Huh? Bronzo can get rapid spin. No, I checked. He does not get rapid spin. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he's not a rapid. That's shocking. Spinner. That's yeah, shocking. I, it, it look, he looks like a, poke, a gyro ball user should be able to rapid spin, but I guess not. The stunt the stunt tank gets defog, doesn't it though? Gunk tank? I don't know if it gets defog. I know Decidui does, Subat does, and maybe Dragapult. Mm. But, but you're not really using Dragapult as a defogger. Yeah, Dragapult or Subat, you're not going to use as your defogger. Subat, if it comes to a battle, it's most likely a Dynamaxer to get a simple boost. And then, Skunk tank does get defog. Oh. Mr. Mr. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know Skunk tank got defog. But yeah, I, I just feel like he doesn't have enough things to remove hazards for him without, you know, hurting himself in the process. Because, I mean, yeah, he can get rid of stuff on his side, but then he loses all that hard work he did to put hazards up on the other side. I, I actually, I tend to agree with you. Uh, I actually rated him a 6 on recovery and support for basically the same reasons. And the, the last... Uh, the last part for me was uh, hardly any recovery. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Um, again, six. I got a six for recovery support as well, Matt. Um, so I think we've, we were on par at the moment. Um, the the main reasons why I gave him a six is because of the intimidators. Like, if you didn't have those intimidators, there would be a lot lower. Um, mm -hmm. There's no recovery um, unless you want to sack off Hatterene with a healing wish. Which is very drastic, um, and it's something. It's a strategy that I often use, but it's always to bring in my wall breakers, which um, to finish off the game. And I just don't know that Dragapult can really lift the entire team to just break everything in its way. Um, so, I mean, it remains to be seen. He probably like he's got. Trick room options there. He's got um, the intimidate options. I, but I just think there's not a lot of recovery. There's not a lot of support, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. You don't necessarily need recovery and support to um, to win games, but it does help. Yeah, honestly, if he could drop Gyarados or Quillfish, one of those, because you don't need two Water type intimidators. <clears throat> he could pick up something that could be beneficial to his team and it would help out a lot more. And then <clears throat> now, <clears throat> what I was talking about earlier by accident uh, is his uh, C, his speed tiers. Um, I give him a 5 as well on his speed tiers. His team is rather slow and like I said, he only has one speedster. No real speed control outside of Trick Room. I mean, you could tell Wind again with a Subat of all things. I doubt he would actually run Subat with that, but I mean, it is a possibility. <clears throat> and um, and Trick Room helps a few of his mons, but no real wall breakers. So I don't see that winning him a lot of games. Yeah, uh, I I agree. Yeah, and then like I said, uh, the Tailwind thing. Yeah, I don't see Subat doing that. Yeah, I, uh, I rated him a six on speed. Um, uh, again, I, I think that uh, he he's not even half in, half out. It, it seems like he's got like one, maybe two, uh, really quick Pokemon, and then he's got the the mons he needs to set up some decent trick rooming but he doesn't have the rest of the team to follow suit. So he's just, he's a little bit all over the place in, in terms of of speed and not necessarily in, in a good way. I actually got to be the voice of controversy, I think. I actually gave him an eight for speed. Um, and the reason why I gave him an eight for speed is that I think if he can get Trick Room up, and I think the strategy would be set Trick Room with Bronzong, use Explosion, bring in Hatterene, because Hatterene is a pretty good wall breaker. Um, it has to be, it'd be very, super, um, it'd be very, it's a super niche strategy, but I think he's, I think he's got it there to be able to 
set the trick room up, explode using Bronzong, get some damage off, bring Hatterene in, maybe set up a Calm Mind, and um, really go hard. Um, then he also got Quillfish, he's got um, Aqua Jet, you got um, Skunk Tank with, um, you know, Sucker Punches. Dragapult also has Sucker Punches, but is also very quick outside of Trick Room. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got... And Garros is good. Garros is a good fast Pokemon as well. You can get a Dragon Dance off, he's in, he's in Home and Hose. Um, so I think eight is... I think that... Ooh, I think eight is pretty good. I think he's... Um, I think he's got enough there. There are strategies available to him to be able to take control of the speed. Um, but um, with the report that he has drafted, I'm not sure that he'd be able to do it consistently, is my only concern. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think he needs something to. Uh, something that, that could actually usefully put up Tailwind or uh, throw some sticky webs up or, or something like that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> All right, and then let's go ahead and move on to uh, Wall Breaking. Uh, Wall Breaking, I give him a seven. He has some heavy hitters, but will most likely to rely on setup. And uh, <clears throat> the way his team's built, it may not come that easy. But if able, he can steamroll people th- th- with the mods he has. Uh, Dragapult being a mix attacker, it can set up in either way. Uh, Gyarados, of course, like like uh, Jaden said, the Dragon Dances can carry the team. And uh, even Decidueye can be a sneaky physical attacker if it needs to be. Jerry, have you been reading my notes? Because that's exactly what I've got to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got really no, good. I, I, yeah, I don't. That's just um, pretty horrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now I've also got um, hands down for a seven for wall breaking, and pretty much exactly the same reasons. Um, like Dragapult and Gyarados are really the two big ones that are going to be lifting him. Um, you have to imagine that Dragapult probably runs um, more special than physical, but you know you can run mix, you can run physical, you can run special. Um, but he just, I, there's nothing that comes in. And just presses buttons to just blow things away. They, they they all need some kind of setup. So Gyarados is good, but he needs something. To, he needs to be able to set it up for Dragon Dance. Dragon Bolt is excellent, but again, can it blow away teams? Probably not. Especially when we know what's coming. Like especially when in a draft setting, we know what's coming. You know what the you know these Pokemon. I think I think it'd be I think it'd be hard press consistently. Smashing through. It's not. It's not to say that like you know you can't be done. I just think you'll have trouble doing it consistently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I read it close to you guys. I actually gave him an eight um, for basically the same reasons. I, I'm interested to see uh, what he'll do uh, in terms of wall breaking. Um, I'm. I haven't seen Swoobat's uh, simple in action yet. Uh, I almost drafted it just to try it, um, but but opted not to, um, just because of its lower defenses. But I do think he has the capability to punch some holes in in his opponent. Um, but like you said, I think it's going to require setup. But if he can get the setup for that, I think that some of these mons are going to be a little bit harder to stop. Yeah, like if Scum Tank can get Sword Dance. If Gun Tank gets Sword Dance, he can just sit in and just press up a punch and things will just go down. And it's just that it's that simple. But getting it to that point in the first place, I think, is a real challenge. Yeah. Well, af- after all that, Team Synergy, what I give him is actually a 10 because he has great cores. He has Dragon Fairy Steel. He has Water Fairy Grass. And... All in all, the team may not look great on paper, but knowing Kenneth and how he can prep and battle, uh, his team, he drafted it to build nicely for him. He just needs to prep very well and put the puzzle pieces together to see the full picture every week. And maybe he'll rack up some wins. That's very generous. I um, I actually played him as a 5 out of 5. 
for Team Synergy. I, I, I've kind of articulated it already a lot. Um, but the fact that he's got two water type intimidators, he's got mm. uh, big, big problems with these, with Swampert and Gyarados. Um, with being four times a week to, to very common moves. Um, the Center Scorch is four times a week to rock. I just, I don't see, like, if you, I sort of, the way I've tried to, like, grade these Team Synergy things is, how do you escape from a problem? So, like, if he has Swampert out and you're facing a grass type, you hard switch to, say, stun tank. But then what happens with, again? What happens after that? Like, you, you've got stun tank in, which is maybe maybe you can get a sword stance off, but it doesn't really do too much to, aside from a poison jab. So, the grass type switches out to something else, let's say a ground type. Maybe you switch to Garrett, maybe, maybe switch to Bronzong, but like you, you're still taking hard damage each time you switch. Um, I mean, Ground is obviously immune, or you're already immune to ground with Gyarados, but the points will stand, you can, you can still predict a switch and hit it with a rock type, and you're in trouble. So I think there's just not enough switching options to safely say that he's got good synergy. Yeah, I actually, I fall, I fall uh, right in between you two. I give him a 7 in team synergy uh, for a little bit of, of both of your reasons. Um, I, I think that he he has things set up for his team to do well for part of a battle. Uh, I just don't think that he's necessarily set up to to carry the the whole battle. Um, I I doubt I doubt very much that he he sweeps uh, with anything. I, I mean, I, it could happen. Um, he gets the proper setup on on some mons. Um, you know, some some unlucky switch, switches. It could definitely happen. But um, overall, I just don't see his working together super well. Um, I've never battled Kenneth before, though. Uh, so interested to see kind of what he brings. I know that, uh, you know, in, in drafting, sometimes you, you're looking for a certain role to fill or a certain type that you need. And uh, there's just simply not good options left. And so you fill it with something a little bit lackluster. Uh, and I feel like maybe that just that happened a little bit uh, here, um, and you just kind of chose, you know, what what would work. Um, so I'm interested to see how he kind of makes this uh, come together. All right. So what was John's overalls for? Uh, thirty-three. So thirty-four. 66, uh, how much did you have? <clears throat> I get a uh, seventy-two. Seventy-two from. Yeah, very generous. I was generous in the bulk and the synergy. <coughs> so his total grade is a 68.6. I want to just round it up to a 69. Yeah, nice. Yeah, 69. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, next up we have Josh. And let's see what Josh is working with here. All right, for bulk, I gave him an eight. Uh, which, which Josh? Oh, what's he got? Uh, yeah, let's run through the team. Oh, okay, yeah. So tier one is Blastoise. Tier two is Slowking. Arcanai. Tier three, Obstagoon. Tier four, Emolga. Tier five, Eldegoss. Prefix are Rune Regis, Duraludon, Mien Shao. And then wild card pick was Darmanitan G. <clears throat> So, for both this is a fi- this is a finalist team. This, oh yeah, this I was is gonna put that out. This is this is team. This the team will be hard to stop. Let's put them right out there straight away. <clears throat> bulk, I give him an eight. Doesn't have a hard wall Pokemon, but plenty of good offensive bulk. That was my main thing. Yeah, agreed. Eight. Um, things will just stay in like they. There's a lot of Pokemon in there that have a lot of staying power. Um, things and things that you wouldn't even suspect as well. Like Elder Goss, is, Elder Goss is deceptively strong, deceptively bulky. Um, Arcanine can be played bulky, can be played with Teleport, can be played with uh, Morning Sun. It will stay. Slow King regenerates, Mirror regenerates. The Morga can roost. Runeregus is bulky. They're, the Pokemon that you draft are there to stay. Like they will stay and do their job. Then 
it's it's really really hard it would be really really difficult to break down this team yeah i agree i I also gave him an eight actually um i think he does have that staying power multiple regenerators elgas even um i think rune rigus uh played right can uh you know be a, a very very difficult thing to get past if you're not prepared so uh i agree i think he's got some some great bulk to his team all right <clears throat> so we all pretty much agree there but i think this is where we kind of split uh because i gave him a four for recovery and support <clears throat> his team has no real reliable recovery to me that i noticed uh he can get rocks and spikes and screens and stuff but it's mainly going to be from two mods, Rune Regis and Slow King Galarian. And I feel like he's going to have to bring those two every week for support. Um, and uh, he does have a nice regenerator core, though, in Slow King and Eldegoss. I will give him that. So I give him points for that, but I kind of graded him a little harshly on it because there's no immediate recovery outside of regenerator. See, I gave him a seven then because and I, and I disagree like pretty hard actually mm. on this one because I think the, the recovery options are great. I'm just double checking Elder Ghost because I didn't actually realize it had, um, yeah, it didn't actually have, um, bloody regenerate, regenerate up. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Um, oh, it does. There you go. This adds, adds more weight to my to what I was going to say. Um, I, because Mia Xiao and Slow King were the two I was thinking of with the recovery. But if Elder Goss has, also has Regenerator, like he's got three Regenerator mods that he can just consistently cycle between. Um, Arcanine has Morning Sun. You know, that's a... Uh, you can re- reliably recover on that. Um, the Molga can roost. Um, Rune Regis, if you really wanted to, can probably pain split. Um, I just think that there's enough that you don't need any like wish wish passing or anything because the Pokemon that he's drafted are so bulky and they can self heal. It doesn't really bother them too much. Um, as for the support options, I don't think there's any problem bringing Rinarigus each week for rocks or spikes um, or drill it on for the, the rock support. Um, I think. All you really need, and all this team really needs, is um, that rock support. Um, I'm, always, I'm a big advocate for webs. I think you know, if you had webs, it would make his support score go higher. But I'm comfortable with the seven. I think he's got really good recovery support. That's fair, and I actually changed my four to a six because I didn't know Mianchao got regenerator as well. I forgot about it. Yeah, actually, I give him a six in recovery and support um, for basically the same reasons. I mean, the the multiple regenerators is great. Um, I think that he has that that staying ability. Um, I do think that he falls a bit short in terms of of additional support. Uh, Joe, I think you're right. He's going to have to bring Slow King and Rune Rigus to to every battle, um, both sharing the you know the the dark of the ghost weakness. Um, so if you come prepared to to conquer those walls, um, I think that it could put him in a rough spot. Um, but if you come unprepared, that's that is going to be hard to beat. It's not necessarily a bad thing him bringing that every week um, because they're still they they are what they are. You know, they're they're walls. They're they're going to be tough to get through. Um, so yeah, again, uh, give him a, a six overall there in recovery and speed. That is fair. All right, so C um, for speed tiers, uh, I give him a six. <clears throat> uh, with all the great mods he drafted, uh, nothing screams speedy, nothing super slow for trick room to take advantage of. Uh, so really, he has nothing for speed control other than uh, bulk. He's gonna have to really rely on his bulk to get him to where he needs to be, and he's gonna need to rely on setup a lot. Uh, mainly for Blastoise, you know, the shell smashing aspect of it. Uh, Arcanine can maybe flame charge, get a speed boost, but I don't know if he'd run Arcanine like that. Darmanitan most likely is going to be Scarf most weeks, I would assume. 
since uh, Gorilla Tactics makes him locked into a move anyway. Which, again, doesn't hurt the team too much, but I feel uh, six was a fair grade in my opinion. Yeah, actually, um, uh, I gave him a five, so uh, I agree. I think he he does lack uh, the commitment to to a speed. You know, he 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 doesn't have anything really that I'm seeing uh, that can really help increase his speed uh, anywhere that I, uh, consistently for for multiple mons or anything. No tailwinders. Um, he can throw the the trick room up if he wants, um, but I don't think he. Uh, really has much that can really truly utilize it. So uh, I just I think speed is where he's lacking. And I, I think you already mentioned this, Jaden, that uh, it, it would benefit him more if he maybe had like a sticky Weber. Yep. Um, for speed, I think I think potentially I've gone a bit generous here, but I've given him an eight. Um, and the reason why I've gone for eight is I think I got had Rory's tinted glasses with the dumb end of ten. Because Scarf the Manitan will just blow things away. <laughs> yes. <I> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but in saying that, though, I think I, I think I can defend an eight um, because Mia Shao gets access to fake out. Mia Shao is pretty quick in, the, in and of itself. Um, Arcanine, it can be it can be quick. Uh, Amolga can I think Amolga can tailwind if he really wanted to ta- like go down that option. He could tailwind and roost and can it he could go? be a useful. Can it? Pretty sure. I didn't, I didn't think it I'll, could. I'll look it up. Let's have a look. We're going to go for the fact checking. See how we go. And. Oh, internet's slow as shit in Australia. Let's go to Showdown and type it in. Yeah, good call. <clears throat> yeah, no, I don't see a Mulga on the list, uh, but I'm using Serebi. Um, new team. Add Pokemon. Just cut the Molga. <laughs> Let's see exactly what it's got. Here we go. The fact check comes in, and it does get it. It does get Tailwind on it Showdown. It does. All right. It does. Well, that's on Showdown. There we go. Pokemon Sword and Shield. But who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Point is, it does get it. At some point, at some point in its life, it does get it. Um, <laughs> Okay, well, um, that's so I'm, 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 uh, it is it is a point. transfer move. Okay. Okay, so you can get it in sword and shield. Well, okay. That's fair. That's fair. I didn't know we got showing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't either. Yeah, no. Well, you you to the tower win, so suck on these ones. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and um. Yeah, that'll definitely help his team get faster. Um. And he's got good options for you know, the, the slower end as well. Runa Regis, Slow King. Um, I, I agree with you both. I think he'll probably bring those each week. Uh, but he's got Officer Green there to you know allay that Dark and Ghost weakness that they both share. So I think overall, I think eight is defensible. I don't know that. Maybe maybe it's a bit generous, but I think I think eight is defensible. Yeah, you made a good defense with the Emolga thing. That's the main thing that stands out for me Uh, but wall breaking though he has so much potential I gave him a 9 his his team can easily sweep anybody between shell smash and darmanitan he he gets those guys in at the right situation and shell smash goes ham and darmanitan just goes boom darmanitan never takes prisoners oh no he goes to the headshot Mm. That's why that ice cold crash misses sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gave Josh an eight for wall breaking, but for the same reasons that you just said, Joe. But I think the reason why I've gone eight instead of nine is because I try when when I've graded these wall breakers, I look at a team and say, can anything in this team just come in, press a button, and just obliterate the, the other side? For me, Blast always needs to Shell Smash to be able to do that, so that's why I've graded him a bit lower. Um, but me and Shao with the high jump kicks will do a lot of damage. Duraludon is hard to hard to beat, and there's a good um, Dynamax Pokemon. Um, 
So I think, I think eight is where it's at. Yeah, I'm falling very similar. Uh, I agree with Joe. I, I give him a nine uh, in wall breaking. I think he just simply has it. He he has what he needs to do to to break through the walls. And I feel like he has a good spread of uh, different types that he can utilize for wall breaking. So I feel like he's going to be well suited for uh, any scenario as long as he's planning properly for his opponents. All right, and that brings us to team synergy. Um, I gave him an 8. Overall, this team looks good. Look, uh, looks great, really. Uh, solid core. Uh, it has pivot options. It has regeneration mons. And the regeneration mons are the ones with the pivots, mostly. Um, and on paper, like I said, it could easily win a lot of games. He'll just have to put in the work and prep and make the plays in, in battle. Yeah, I agree with you there, Joe. 8, cool team synergy um i think the this team is really a final team like this is a finalist team you you don't you can't um draft a team like this and not make finals like that's just how it goes um i would i would be very very surprised and very shocked if he didn't make it yeah i actually i agree um i gave him an eight for overall team synergy uh he drafted really well um, I feel like he has just about everything that he needs. Uh, you know, he's got uh, five trades he can utilize if he really find, you know, wants to fine tune his team. Uh, you know, take a look at it and kind of, you know, break it down, see what he can do. But honestly, I don't think there's too much room to grow here. Yeah. Remember, Josh, with great minds comes great responsibility. So we better see you in the playoffs. No pressure. All right, that brings <laughs> us to our next competitor, and that is. Wait, what was the other oh, schools? Oh, sorry. Uh, I gave him a seventy-four. What'd y'all give him? Seventy-two. Uh, Seventy-eight. Jeez, lay off his balls, Jaden. <laughs> all right, so it's a seventy-four point six. So we'll give him a seventy-five overall between all of us. Yep. <clears throat> All right, now we have Melvin of the New Orleans Apes. His draft picks were the Metagross, Sylveon, Hydreigon, Araquanid, Delmines, Butterfree, Weezing K for Cantonian, Manti, Nido Queen, and Tom Kelder. And I do got to start by saying I did give his team a nine for bulk. It is incredibly bulky. It can take a lot of hits. Certain mods can dish them back out. And I do like the build of his team other than Butterfree. That's a T5, you know. <laughs> it is what it is. I love Butterfree, man. Butterfree all day. Butterfree and Sleep Pound is just, just the bane of my existence. I gave him an 8 for bulk. Okay. All right. Not too for exact, for exactly the same reasons. Yeah, I, uh, I also gave him a 9. A very bulky team, and I feel like he didn't sacrifice power for that bulk, uh, which is not always easy to do. So, uh, good good picks there, good bulk. Yeah, I think Delmines is kind of a sleeper in that aspect, because most people don't see it as a threat, and it, and it really is. But, um, for the next topic, uh, recovery and uh, support... I gave him a 7. He has some options for recovery. Uh, with uh, with passing wishes. And he also has pain split options in certain mods. Uh, so I, I give him credit on that one. Uh, won't have much outside of that. But he does have a, a good rapid spinner. And does have options for defog. And can also set mini hazards with Needle Queen, but he will be heavily reliant on Needle Queen to do that. And of course, webs is always a nice uh, support thing to have for this team. That's not the fastest. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I also give him a seven. Actually, um, I agree. He's got uh, a fair amount of of support 
uh, that he's bringing along. I think he's got, as you mentioned, he's got the webs. He's got, yeah, I'm not going to repeat everything you said, but he, he's got a lot of options um, that he can utilize. And I think that's going to serve him really well. Um, I do feel like he is lacking a little bit in recovery um, there. So uh, that's what uh, kind of took that down a little bit uh, to the seven. And I got it. I gave him an eight for recovery. Um, and the only other thing I'll add is that um, Conquador's Drain Punch. Um, it's a consistently good move. Um, you would know, he... jackass. <laughs> <laughs> I would know. I won a, won a league with Conquador. Um, he was my MVP. <laughs> very, very good Pokemon. Very, very strong moves. Very um, between Drain boy. Punch and Knock Off. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Love, <clears throat> love Conquador. Chef, give him the chef kiss. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> all right then we'll go ahead and move on to speed cores and this is where uh i gave him a six i mean i know he has sticky webs but he needs to get sticky webs up i don't know if he brings <clears throat> a rack every week to help with that uh, uh his speed core is pretty slow for a singles draft team he doesn't really have a real speedster in any way except Hydreigon with the scarf and uh, that's been proven to be easily played around uh, especially if you have a fairy on your team um, he's gonna like I said he's gonna be relying on webs and the only good thing about his team is he does have a few tailwind setters that can help him out there yeah okay, get out of my head Joe <laughs> <laughs> pretty much exactly the same reason yeah because nothing in his team screams, I'm quick. Like, Hydreigon's probably the only one there, right? Like, mm -hmm. if, but even Hydreigon's not a, he's not exactly, like, renowned for his speed. He's more of a, I'm gonna blow things away. Like, 98 base speed as his, as his fastest Pokemon is probably not going to be good enough in, um, in the long term. Like, webs is good, but webs won't always work. Not with you have levitators, not when you have flyers. Um, heavy duty boots is still is now a thing. Mm -hmm. um, all it takes is, as you said, Joe, one fairy type, and it's curtains for Hydreigon. <clears throat> yep, I uh, I give him a six in speed as well. Uh, basically the same reasons. So um, I think that that uh, that is just where he is going to fall a little bit short. Um, he's got double tailwinders, two of my favorites actually, Butterfree and Mantine, both, both bonds I love. So, um, yeah, fuck you and your Mantine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, That's overall I think that, <laughs> uh, I think <laughs> that, uh, that's honestly probably the, the lowest rating I'm going to give him for his whole team though, is that speed. I think overall he's he's done a great job. So, and, and since I keep stealing your thunder, Matt, I let you lead off into wall breakers. Oh sure, yeah, happily. Uh, let me pull up my my bullshit here for wall breaking. Uh, I gave him a nine uh, in wall breaking. I think that he has multiple mons that he can just drop on the field, and they're they're just gonna, they're going to break shit up, um, <laughs> and. Even even the ones that can't necessarily do that with a little bit of of uh, prep work, a little bit of, of setup, I, I feel like he does have the option to really just hit hard with uh, with some of these mods. Um, let me see if I can find my notes to have more specifics. No, I don't. I stopped. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to be the voice of controversy, I think, because I'm giving it a six for wall breaking. Ooh. And the reason why I've gone for a six is because you don't like Melvin. A lot. Get it. No, it's not like Uncle that man. <laughs> Fuck this dude. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, a lot of the Pokemon that he has, and they're much like um, I can't remember who it was. Now maybe it was um, Kenneth. I just think he's um. His Pokemon that he has drafted need a lot of support to be able to set up to be able to break things. So Metagross typically, when it, when it's sweeping, 
runs weakness policy, which it doesn't really want to take a weakness po- weak. Like, it doesn't want to take a super effective attack when it's um, not yeah. able to Dynamax. Yeah. Um, Hydreigon, you know, it's it hits hard, but like you, it'll get stopped by a fairy. Um, Conkledurk is an excellent Pokemon, but again, it gets stopped by a fairy. Um, you just one fairy away from really getting sort of stopped in his tracks. Um, you know, a fairy dragon steel core on an opponent's team is gonna really gonna hurt him. Um, and it'll really stop, it'll just really stop it in his tracks. So I think the Pokemon he's drafted are very, very good. I think that he will get stopped. And I think you'll have a, I think you'll have a deceptively hard time and break the things down. Yeah, and uh, I give him a nine as well. I agreed with Matt. Um, I mean, Oof. Like, <laughs> like seven of his Pokemon can just go out there and just hit things hard. Needle Queen, Delmice, Conkeldur, Hydreigon, Selveon, Metagross. I mean, those things can just go out there and put dents in people. And I used Needle Queen before, so I would know. Um, <laughs> Melvin. Not being as strong a battler as most uh, competitors in this league, he definitely drafted to make him a competitor in this league. Ooh, throw in shade. He's going to listen to this and be mad at you. <laughs> you ain't mad at me saying, no, nah, I'm not going to wall break. Fuck you. We'll break you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to break through your walls. Uh, all right, and then uh, Jaden, go ahead and lead us into Team Synergy since you don't like this guy. Uh, I gave him a seven. Oh, nice. I gave him a seven. I think overall he's got a good team. I think he'll he's got a good um a good ability to be able to switch in and out between Pokemon. Um, obviously we got twenty minute timer, so we don't really want to be switching too much. Mm-hmm. But I think what he has got there is is good. I think it'll serve him really, really well. Yeah, I, I kind, I gave him a six. I, I, I kind of critiqued him hard on this because he has great cores. Like uh, his, the cores he has on this team are fantastic. But uh, he doesn't really have pivoting uh, options. Uh, he has some, but not great ones. And he's gonna have to really, really rely on those hard switches to gain momentum. And that's where I feel he'll have issues. But, I mean, this team's good enough to get him some wins. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, for Team Synergy, I actually give him an 8. Uh, I think that uh, he's got a good variety of mons, I think, in terms of typing. Uh, he's got access to Tailwind, Toxic Spike, Sticky Web, Rapid Spin. Uh, he can set up barriers or just you know drop one of those wall breakers in and just go all out attack so uh overall i think that uh his team's actually going to work pretty well together i think he drafted well all right well what is y'all's top mirror ratings for melvin here 72 uh 78 jesus i give him a 70 so we shall see. What so who happens. hates him now, Joe? Hey, who hates him now? <laughs> At least I like. Him. And that's a seventy-three point three. So round down to seventy-three. All right. Next up, we have uh, the other Zamora, uh, the Dallas Rock Stars, coached by my brother Steven. Uh, and uh, this is where the talent will drop. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> let let the slug fest begin. We were talking off there. Yeah. Right, we're going to well, let you lead, Joe. <laughs> well, first, we're going to go over his team. It's a Crocodile, Lycanroc Dust, the mascot, Skarmory, Magmortar, Lantern, Lilligant, Lapras, Roserade, Raichu, Alolan, and Togekiss. So, we're going to go ahead and I think he's going to have the lowest grade for bulk I've given yet uh, it's a 7 um, he's got some good bulk even mons that can dish out a lot of damage can take some damage but that's kind of the opposite of what uh, most people have been having and I think that might hurt his team a little bit him going a little more glass cannony uh, than uh, 
you know, having the reliable bulk on his team. I'm yeah, going to six. I... Mm, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I'm going to I'm going to six for Steven's bulk. Um, only be cool. the 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 key reason why it's even that high for me is Skarmory. Skarmory can take a hit. Mm-hmm. Not much else in his team can. Uh, Togekiss can take some hits, but Togekiss is going to be relying on, you know, flinch hacks, which is fine. It's just a legitimate strategy. <clears throat> but, and I mean, I've been burnt by Kiss, um, Togekiss's flinch hacks before. It, it, it kind of burns me a bit, but no, it's a it's a legitimate strategy. It's a great strategy because of the serene grace. Um, mm-hmm. But I look at his team. And I just wonder where the bulk is. Like, where is the bulk? I actually wonder a lot of things about this team. I wonder where the speed is. I wonder where the wall breaking is. I wonder where the... <laughs> like, where is anything in this team? Um, uh, but leaving it at just at bulk for the time being, I... Skarmory is bulky. It can it can roost. And that is why... It, and Tokus is bulky and can take it and can roost. And that is why it's a six. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I agree. I actually gave him a seven in bulk as well. Uh, same reasons, you know. He's he's got Skarmory, he's got Togekiss. Even Lapras can uh, take some hits uh, if utilized properly. Um, all three of those are going to be weak to uh, electricity, though. So uh, if you you bring that, you you might deal you know, be able to deal with him unless he swaps in that lantern. But um, overall, not uh, not impressive bulk. And that goes to uh, the next category of uh, recovery and hazards. Um, I give him a seven. Six. I give him a seven. Uh, he's he's got some decent hazard removal, mostly in Skarmory, but uh, he has it in I think Toby Kiss as well. Uh, he also has <coughs> setters, and he can get spikes. He can get rocks. He can. He can set screens if he wanted to. I mean, not reliably because it's going to come from Roserade and Raichu, but he does have the option. I think even Lapras is an option for that. Yeah, but Lapras can't do Gigantamax either. If he could Gigantamax his Lapras, that'd be super beneficial to him, but obviously it's just Dynamax only. Yeah. So that that's going to put a damper on his team a little bit, but I think... Uh... He still has the ability to get some stuff up, so may- maybe he'll figure out a way to work it out. Yeah, yeah. I, I gave him a, a six in recovery and support. Um, again, uh, similar to, to what you're saying here. He's got like two real recovery mons, and uh, he has a small number of support mons, but nothing, nothing that says, "Hey, this is this is what I'm here to do." It's, it's really like. Uh, you know, mons that uh, just have access to to the moves, but aren't really designed for it, uh, with the exception of, of Skarmory. Mm-hmm. Honestly, if he drops Lantern, because he already has an Electric type and a Water type, and drops Lantern for something bulky, the team could be a lot better. Yeah, but do you drop Lantern though? Because he's got three Pokemon that are weak to electricity, and you got Water Dorb and Lantern. Maybe if he's Maybe you got like um Electivire or something to with the motor drive. Well, I have Electivire. But not like it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gave I gave him a six as well, and I just, like I just wonder where the I wonder a lot about this team. Um, <laughs> I'm so, I know your brother, but I'm so sorry. Like, I look at this team and just like. Like how's like what's the strat like? Uh, get him on, get him, bring him on here. Like what, what's his strategy? Hey, uh, all what I know is, know? all I know is from what he told me was, this is what he's gonna say. Hey, to be <laughs> fair, I like doubles better, so that's what he's gonna say. <laughs> did me he too, sniped? Steven. Me too. Did he get? <laughs> did he get sniped a lot? No, he didn't. I, uh, I don't know what <laughs> he was going for, but he went for it. All right. Uh, the recovery options are obviously Skarmory and Togekiss. Um, Lilligan can, if Lilligan can, you know, surf a Quiver Dance, she can get some good Giga Drains in, you know, use that, um, use that big root to recover a bit more health. Um, 
So I gave him a six. <clears throat> All right. Uh, for speed tiers, uh, I give him a six. Uh, middle of the road speed doesn't have much for speed control. I mean, he has some tailwind options, but other than that, uh, it's not really the way he plays. So I doubt uh, we'll see him getting up tailwinds and stuff. I think he's just gonna switch them on in and attack. So I gave him a three for speed. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, that's a rough one. Uh, what he has, and this is, uh, this is I feel like this is um, it's nothing bad, right? Like the yeah. the. The Pokemon that he's, that he's drafted are very, very good choice scarf Pokemon. However, we can only allow one choice scarf. Mm-hmm. So, Crocodile, Togekiss, Rose of Rage, Magmorta, very, very good with choice scarf. But he's going to have to pick between those four Pokemon, which, which one's going to hold the scarf each week. Crocodile and Togekiss aren't compatible in that regard because Togekiss wants that scarf to be able to cheat quicker than a lot of things. So that she can whack those um, air slashes off. <clears throat> Crocodile also wants that scarf because he wants to be able to, to blow things away and get that moxie boost. Mm-hmm. So there's not a there's no, there's no real compatibility between those two. And Lycan Rock gets um, Accelerock, which is good, but there's really nothing. It's most of his Pokemon sit in that middle tier of um, of speed. But there's nothing that they can do to boost it. There's nothing that they can do to sort of be any good in trickering or any good in in under regular play. It's just sort of stuck in the middle, and there's nothing really to support it, unless he does run Tailwind, which I think is very difficult to do in um, singles. Mm-hmm. Then maybe he maybe he will. Um, but the issue I have is that he's got two. Pokemon, Lilligant and Raichu, that can both be very, very quick, but he's got no access to be able to make them quick. He's not got uh, a Sunsetter for Chlorophyll, and he's not got an uh, Electric Terrain Setter, unless the Raichu actually sets terrain itself using Dynamax. He's got no reliable terrain setting to be able to boost its speed. So I think it's just, um, overall, it's just not a very impressive speed tier at all. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I, I also rated him a six. I just think that he he's lacking uh, in in the speed uh, and 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 ways to really uh, increase it for his team or to to decrease it for his opponents. Uh, if it came down to it, he just uh, simply doesn't have that. Um, I'm interested to see uh, what he does with Crocodile Togekiss combo. Uh, I uh, I think he should run my crocodile set uh, i think that might serve him a little bit better especially stacking up with that moxie um nobody likes the the beat up strategy with the king's rock uh, <laughs> except me i love strategy. it but yeah oh. that's uh that's it all righty and then we'll go to wall breaking i gave him a seven uh he has wall breaker potential uh, he just needs to find the right items or opportunity to set up to get there. I gave him a five. <laughs> I feel like I'm absolutely savaging this poor this poor bloke. <laughs> well, <laughs> but it's just it's just not. Uh, watch me watch me lose to him now though. Like watch me get absolutely like. <laughs> I hope that crap. happens. You haven't beat him yet, I mean, from what he says. No, I haven't. But um, if I face him this time, it's probably a good chance to. Now nah, we're on opposite ends. Of, oh no, no, I'll battle in week four. All right, oh, yeah. Stephen. If you beat me, I'll eat my words. Obviously, if you smash absolutely <laughs> thrash me, I'll eat my words. <laughs> but we got we got to stream that one. The COVID made him oh, crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but from what I can see, the, the, the big wall breaker he has is Crocodile, and that's good. Like, Crocodile is a good, is a good wall breaker. Togekiss doesn't break walls. Togekiss flinches Pokemon to, into submission. Like, 
you got to get really lucky to get like three or four um, air slashes in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and again, like I said before, there's nothing wrong with that strategy. It's just not, doesn't scream wall breaking to me. I would prefer um, more of like the spec mag mortar. Yeah, I suppose. But what's it at speeding though? Like at 84, I think. It's in the 80 somewhere. Yeah, I just don't see mag mortar as a following. <coughs> I mean, spec mag mortar is nothing to, be, nothing to sneeze at. Like, obviously, it'll do damage, but the problem I'm having is can it actually get fast enough to be able to do the damage. It might take out one, but what's it got after that second Pokemon? Mm-hmm. Um, I said it could break a wall, not sweep. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. But, um, but for the same reasons I was saying before, I think Crookedon is his main, his main wall breaker, and I don't mm-hmm. think Crookedon has enough in him to take out a whole team consistently. That 92 yeah. speed it has a damper on it. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I gave him a 7 for wall breaking uh, capabilities for basically the same reasons. I think that he. Because you and, you and Joe are like, pretty much bang on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. I just I think that you, you're, you're making some good points, though, Jaden, is. is uh, it just seems like this team is lacking a little bit of everything. Um, he's he's spread himself, I, not even spread himself thin. It, it is just, he needs to double down on something. Yeah. He has, he has five moves to make a difference. So we shall see. And look, I think that can, I think that will help. Like, I think that will help if he does make those changes. Um, he obviously needs, I think from the outset, he needs an, another wall breaker. Mm-hmm. Like something that can just come in, press a button, and then things will just sort of disintegrate underneath it. Because, like, I like Lycan Rock, but without maxing, I don't feel it's as big of a wall breaker as what he thinks it may be. Mm. But um, when it comes down to Team Synergy, I again gave him a 7. Uh, he has good cores, uh, he has bolt play availability, not much more than that. Uh, he's gonna need to rely on getting up tailwinds or slowing down other teams with, uh, paralysis, maybe bringing in Lantern and Raichi together to spread, like, uh, nuzzle, thunder wave shenanigans going on. I mean, that's the best option I could think of off the top of my head when I look at his team. And, yeah, that. I gave him a seven. I also gave him a seven. Um, so we're just we're spot on here with with Stephen, uh, Joe. Um, yes, we are. I I think that uh, I just I don't see uh, a real strategy with this team. Uh, I mean, unless he's some genius, and I'm just I'm just not <laughs> seeing it. Um, but I, it just. On top of not having that strategy, the the team itself is just not well balanced in terms of of typing. Um, so I, I just think he he lacks that uh, that cohesion with his team. I've um I sent my scores to the chat just before we came on, and I've actually updated it as I've gone. Um, I had him at a five, but I'm dropping it to a three. Um, <laughs> I, I can't understate like how much I really don't like this team. <laughs> I'm sorry, Stephen. You haven't drafted very well at all. I'm sorry. It's just my it's just my opinion. Um, I, it's, there's just not a lot going for it. You know, to be fair, he was on a date when he was drafting. Okay, so it must have yeah, just he, been worth he it. He must have been thinking with the wrong head. <laughs> must have been. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, um, maybe, maybe it is the COVID, like you know, screwing us ahead a bit. But I just don't like this team at all. Um, <laughs> I think, as Matt was saying, he's lacking a little bit of everything. I'll probably go so far as to say he's missing a lot of everything. Um, he needs to. He definitely 
he lacks an identity in this team. He's, he, he can't look. You don't look at this team. And you think, ah, oh, yeah, he's going fast or he's going hard. He's bulky. Um, you just look at this team, and it's just a whole lot of. Uh, um, I, I didn't know we added Gordon Ramsay of the Pokemon world to the chat. <laughs> Man, Terrible just, drafting, yeah. you donkey. <laughs> <laughs> the lamb sauce. Where's the lamb sauce? Where's the power? So what's your overall <laughs> rating, Jaden? 23. Ooh. Ooh. Ouch. After the oh, sorry. It's, um, sorry. No, no, no. You double it and you get 46. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. That's still not great. So he gets a 61. That is a horrible grade. Probably the worst one we'll see. I hope he That's wins it all. Rule, is it? Huh? <laughs> we love an underdog story. Come on, Steve. Trick me wrong. <laughs> Win the league. Win the league with just those five. Come on. <laughs> I hope he does. I hope he does now. I feel like I'm absolutely savage. And if he does, I'll like, I will eat my words. All right. Next up, we have the real talk of the town. Uh, two-time champion, Townsville Crocodiles. Oh, lovely! I've just, I've just, sav- I've just savaged your brother, and now you got me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's um, go. I've actually, team. I've actually, I've actually graded my team as well. Um, obviously, all tens. No. Um, totally. <laughs> No, no, no. Um, I actually wouldn't mind giving my scores at the end of it as well. See how close I was to you guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, Cinderace. You have Cinderace in DD, Male, Slowbro, Cantonian, Nido King, Rotom Mo, Arctazolt, Rabombi, Vanellix, Holty Guys, and Faramosa. Matt, I'll let you take it away. Ah, uh, don't make me go. No way. You're you the only go. other person. Sorry, I gotta, I gotta run to the bathroom or something. <laughs> All right. Well, just looking at uh, your team, uh, Jaden, and going based off bulk, uh, you have tremendous bulk in Slowbro, of course. Um, Vanellix can be bulky. Uh, Arc Dissolve can be a bulky attacker as well, especially with that slush rush thing you got going on there. And uh, Indeedee is a naturally bulky mon that hits hard. Uh, I would say I'd give your team uh, eight in bulk. I think it's pretty fair. Uh, Rubambi has uh, no bulk, but focus sashing, of course, that thing with sticky web options and stuff like that. And your team's looking pretty good. Yeah, I uh, I gave you a seven in bulk, um, basically the same. Uh, I mean, Slowbro uh, with the the regenerator is going to be great. Um, in DD, I, I got some good bulk there as well. Um, even Poltegeist, um, when used properly, I feel like uh, can can take some hits. It's um, deceptively it's deceptively um, strong in the special bulk. I uh, looked it, it up is, before yeah. I drafted it, and it's got like I think it's something absurd, like 110 special defense. Yeah, yeah, it's, so it's, it's honestly not bad. No, it's a little drop that quick. <laughs> and it, even oh. Rotom Mo, like any of the any of the special Rotoms, they have like a 97 for both of their their defenses, which is n- nothing to shirk at when uh, they are as, as like quick as they are. Or th- it might even be like 108 or something like that. Um, mm. But overall, I think uh, a decent bulk there uh, with, with the 7. Well, only... Um... Which I gave us gave, gave me the um, highest uh, bulk. I gave myself a seven on my on, when I was assessing it. Mm-hmm. But I think for the same reasons as um, as Matt. Like there's some good bulk there. It's not a bulky team. Um, as, I was I was actually drafting for bulk, but then I did then just sort of take it away. I didn't really end up finishing bulk with that with um with a whole lot of bulk. I think I think it'll, the bulk will be held with the with the, um, with the Roar Veil from Villarks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and uh going on to uh the recovery and uh support um obviously you have the slow bro with the regenerator uh other than that i don't really see much uh recovery on your team unless i'm missing something but yeah so recovery and support i do give you a nine though because you have a bunch of support options you have sticky webs and rabambi you have rocks and nido king uh even cinderace can court change if you needed it to uh there's rapid spin and pheromosa there's screens and ndd and Slowbro. uh Slowbro can slack off itself if it needs to it doesn't have to fully rely on regenerator and uh yeah there's a lot of things your team can do in that aspect especially vanilla's getting up hell for your team when necessary yeah i actually gave you an an eight in uh in recovery and support uh, i agree with joe i don't I, unless i'm missing it as well not a lot of recovery here um i don't necessarily know that you're gonna need it just based on looking at your team um but uh you do have a ton of support uh so i feel like uh, with proper setup you're you're gonna excel uh with what you do have uh, and hopefully not need to uh to do recovery very often and Slowbro, yeah. Slowbro can recover all fucking day, so that might be all you need. I actually gave myself a six on the um, recovery and support. Um, I think maybe I was only looking at the um, at the recovery side because I didn't really consider the support options. Um, because I put Ryan B's webs more into the speed tiers, and um, I just didn't really consider you know Vanillax's um, uh, raw avail all that much. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think I think you guys are right in saying that Slowbro is really my only um, recovery option. Um, I don't think Cinderace gets access to anything in particular. I don't think Pheromos even gets Drain Punch either. And even the, even in that regard, you don't even really want Pheromos to be running Drain Punch because yeah. it, there's, there's, no <laughs> there's no HP. There's no HP. There's no there's no defense. You, if you're taking a hit, you're, just, you're pretty much glass anyway. So you want to be hitting as really as hard as possible. And then uh, that brings us to speed tiers, and oh boy, do you have a bunch of it. Uh, of course, like you said, you can only scarf one Pokemon, and Ndidi, Nidoking, Rotomo are all great scarf options. Rabombi's naturally fast, gets those quick, uh, quick webs, and thanks to its ability, can't be faked out in any way. So not even that can outspeed it in a sense. Uh, Cinderace, extremely speedy. Uh, Pheromosa, of course, is all speed and attack. And then uh, Vanellix boosts Arcazolt speed double every time it comes in under hail. So there's a lot of options there, especially Pulte guys with a Shell Smash. And it's not that slow to begin with either. So a Shell Smash puts it a cut above the rest. The only thing is, I would say, is you don't want to run into a Trick Room team if you've lost Slowbro. But other than that, I think you can handle any Trick Room counters to your team pretty well. Especially since this is being singles and Trick Room's not as prevalent here as it would be if it was a doubles. Yeah, what was your what was your number rating, Joe? Nine. I yeah, I also had a nine. Um, I yeah, think. <laughs> I think that uh, speed speed is where it's at here uh, with your team. Uh, it's really well covered. Um, you have options for slowing down your opponent as well. Um, I think a lot of your mons aren't going to need uh, that that choice scarf, especially if you uh, get your your sticky webs up. Um, you won't even need to to worry about scarfing anything in particular. Um, so just really really good speed picks. Um, I agree with Joe though. I think that uh, if you get trick roomed. Uh, you're going to need an answer for that. <clears throat> and uh, one more thing is uh, what helps Jaden in the speed tiering too that uh, could even bump him up to a 10 in my opinion now that I think of it is uh, Indeedy Psychic Terrain. Uh, Jaden's team is just so fast that they're, they're going to need to rely on that uh, priority moves and Indeedy's just not going to let them a lot of the time yeah, that's a good point <laughs> so I, I would rank it a 10 in my opinion now that i 
put that into some perspective. I'm gonna keep you at a nine, Jaden. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's just petty, man. <laughs> no, I'll, 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 keep, I'll keep myself at nine as well. Um, I think, I think as much as it, as much as indeed he gains for the um, sort of you know the protecting of, from the priority moves, I think I think you're right in saying that the trick room options are probably going to be a bit of my Achilles heel. Um, I mean, the, the obvious options is obviously Slowbro. Um, after Zolt can probably come in if he's not, um, if Pale isn't up, but that's very situational. So, after Zolt isn't exactly that, isn't exactly a speed team, and he's got base 55 speed. Um, so, it's at the higher end of slow, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I think Trick Room will be a problem, and I think. Um, Trying to manage Trick Room will be the will be the key to winning games. So I think yeah, nine is fair. All right, and uh, <coughs> for wall breaking, I'm gonna give you a solid eight. Um, Cinderace and Faramosa, of course, not having access to uh, Dynamax is gonna hinder them a little bit. Um, Arc is all really gonna relying on hell, and if teams can stop you from getting that, uh, it's not gonna be able to punch holes. Uh, Needle King, Rotom, and Indeedy, and Pulsey guys are gonna be the main Pokemon I see uh, busting holes in people from the way I know how you battle. So that that'll be uh, eight for me without having to set up too much and actually just come out and hit things. I think eight works for me. Actually, uh, really a little bit lower. I give you a seven. Um, I think you do have some mons that you can just you can drop on the field, and, and they're gonna you know put some dents in in the enemy team. But uh, nothing nothing that like I don't know. When I look at your team, I don't just see like oh man, this is what I have to worry about in terms of of wall breaking, right? Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, but I do think there's a lot of potential there. Uh, a lot of these ones have, have the ability to do that with uh, a little bit of setup. Um, I think that even though you can't Dynamax uh, Faramosa and Cinderace, um, with them being you know somewhat of, a, of glass cannons, having that in DD to put up that psychic terrain to prevent priority moves from potentially uh, you know, hurting them, um, you know, especially if you know, they already take like stealth rock damage or something like that, um, then I think that uh, they, they do stand a good chance of, of putting in some work. Yeah, I've, I've put myself out of an eight as well. And I think, um, when I, again, with the, the, the test being, can something come in, just press buttons and, and really ruin shit. Um, I think Faramosa and Eva King both, <clears throat> both really do that. Cinderace does as well with, um, with these fireballs. He gets stabbed everything. Um, you know, I think he. I think he does. I think he probably um, does a fair, fair amount of damage to the opponents. So I think I'm happy with an eight. Um, Poltergeist. The Poltergeist obviously needs that setup so to actually really do that damage. But I think so. I think that's what prevents it from being higher, in my opinion. <clears throat> that's fair to me. And when it comes to team synergy. I give you an eight. Your team uh, has lots of bolt turn opportunity. Uh, Regenerator is going to keep your defensive core strong. There's good options for you and sticky webs, and of course, uh, running hell for Arctazolt. Um, I do feel hell will hurt the rest of your team. Like if you wanted to sash something or something of that nature, hell can put a hindrance to your team in that aspect. If uh, for some reason arc results get blasted before the hell is over, and then you're kind of stuck there with the rest of your team getting pelted by the hell. But other than that, uh, your team has good cores, and I feel like it can do a lot of damage this season. Yeah, I, I also gave you an eight. Uh, I think your your team is going to play well together, um, especially being. Uh, aware of of your kind of your your Achilles heel as you mentioned, uh, just 
uh, maybe where your team lacks. And I feel like with proper uh, preparation, you're going to be able to, to easily sidestep those issues. So um, I think that overall, it's it's going to it's going to be a, a team to look out for. It's actually one of the, the highest rated teams that, that I have here. Um, I'm going to give myself an eight for um, for Team Synergy. Um, it's funny that you've set it on one of the highest rated for you, Matt, because I've rated myself like right in the middle. <laughs> um, I'm out in the first, third, fourth, eight, eight out of 16. So dead, right dead in the, right dead in the middle. Right now, you're my highest rank, uh, Jaden, at 86. So, wow. Matt, yeah, have you? Uh, I that would be a let's see, it's 39, so it's actually going to be 88. So, is that, or, no, 78. 78. 78. 78. I've got myself, I've got myself at 76, <laughs> but not really counting my score for this. I was doing it for fun, see if I was close. Puts Jaden at an 82 overall. Not bad. Good team. All right. Now we move on uh, to Ryan's team. Zeros. All around zeros. <laughs> Hate this team so much. <laughs> Ryan, if you're listening to this, change. Just change. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the. What used to be the Cincinnati Chinchinos is now the Country Chinchinos, which Ryan dubbed them. Um, they drafted Volcarona, Incineroar, Rotomlash, Gudra, Claydol, Quagsire, Slurpuff, Serena, Sableye, and Umbreon. And I think uh, like four of those were snipes from Jaden, so... <laughs> <laughs> Now, Ryan and I go way back. Um, we used to, we were in a um, Pokemon gym league together. He's um, the fire gym leader, I'm the psychic gym leader. I let, I let um, you lead so, away on this one, Jaden. He's, um, his preference is doubles, um, but he's also not too bad at singles. Um, for bulk for Ryan, I'm actually giving him a seven. I think overall he's got a good team. I think he's, um, I think his main purpose is to have like a bit of a mean team. Um, he loves his Quagsire. It's a, it's a running choke, but I absolutely cannot stand Quagsire um, because I, I really like running McTimmy. Um, and he likes running Quagsire as it's um, counter. Um, take notes, take notes. <laughs> um, so overall, I think his team is... Um, He's got some good bulk, you know, Incineroar intimidates, um, Incineroar is also very strong and very bulky in and of itself, right, and Wash, very strong, gets will of wisps off, um, can burn things, um, Umbreon, very bulky, Sableye, very bulky, Quagsire, st stupidly bulky, I hate it so much, um, so I think it's seven. Seven, all right. Looking at his team, I, I can go for an 8. Uh, I like Quagsire. Unaware ability is always useful. Rotom Wash takes a lot of hits. Umbreon, you just like Quagsire now because I hate it. <laughs> Umbreon, of course, is a tank all its own. Yudra is very specially defensive. Claydol can be defensive. Um, not as much as people would think, but it can take punishment. And Volcarona always can be built to take punishment to get off those quiver dances. And Incineroar's Intimidate doesn't hurt either. Yeah, actually, I rated him at a 7. Um, I, I think that he does have uh, some acceptable bulk to his team, but I do feel that if he... Uh, just considering that the wild card was the last pick and, and he's right dead center um, of, of the draft. Uh, I think that if he hadn't chosen to, to draft something uh, with his wild card pick that was you know purely bulk, that his team would have fell short in terms of bulk. Mm -hmm. That's a fair. That's a fair assumption. <laughs> All right, Jaden, go ahead with the next category. 
Uh, recovery and support. Hang on, where is he? Where is this guy? Um, gave him an eight. Gave him an eight for recovery and support. And I think when I look at his team, he's on. Abrion is the big one that stands out for me in the, in the recovery recovery space because he's got that wish protect option. Um, you know, you can wish pass on to things as well. Um, Quagsire recover, still get you know flashes of Quagsire recovering. Um, Save life, pranks to recover. Save life can also get, lend a lot of support with Will O Wisp. Um, because like, and generally like cause problems to the other opponent. Uh, same with Rotom. Rotom can also cause a lot of problems. Um, for opponents with the with the um, slow vault switches and with uh, Will O Wisp, um, I think overall it's a good recovery support in this team. Uh, Stealth Rocks from Claydol mm-hmm. can't hurt. Um, Slurp Puff can lay down webs if he really needs it to. Um, there's, there's viable, legitimate strategies using webs with from Slurp Puff, so I think he's done well. I gave him an 8 a bunch of things that you just listed Uh, his team is just very versatile and can really support each other in some very positive ways and he also has uh, removal and played all as well as Rotom Wash and I think even Serena can get rapid spin so he, he has a lot of options to get a hazards on the other side and keep him off his side. Yeah, I, uh, I gave him a 7 uh, in recovery and support. Um, he, he's he got a couple wishers, uh, which I think is, is going to serve him well. But uh, overall, not other than that, not a ton of recovery. Um, in terms of support, I think that he's going to be, I don't know, fairly dependent on, on Claydol, which in my opinion, is a fairly unremarkable uh, Pokemon. I, I don't really <laughs> play it all very much. Easy, Matt. <laughs> um, my gym team. Love Claydol. <laughs> uh, Claydol, to me, is is almost as bad as Conkler, one of the worst Pokemon. Um, <laughs> You're so lucky you live overseas, eh? <laughs> You're so lucky I've got the, the rider and I can't go anywhere. <laughs> No, uh, but you know, overall, not not bad recovery and support. Uh, just also not great. All right, Jaden, what about the speed tiers? The game is six for speed. Um, the the big one that looks out that sort of speaks to me is um, slurp off. Um, I think the more intuitive way to play slurp off is 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 the belly drum set, the belly drum unburden set. <clears throat> Which, um, it's always the safe to say that that's going to cause huge, huge problems for his opponents if he runs that set. Uh, especially because he can die in a max slope off. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul Corona is the other one. Quiver Dancing can, um, you can help with that, help, um, patch that speed. But much like what we were talking about with the wall breaking options, he needs that setup to be able to, um, you need, that, you need that sound to be able to do anything with it. So that's why I think a six is probably about right and fair. Okay, I gave him a seven. Uh, a lot of the same things you said. Um, Walker run is quiver dancing, and Slurp Up's uh, uh, ability certainly does help him in a, in a way. Uh, but his team is real middle of the road. I don't even think Trickin would help him in a sense. Because he, he has really no slow wall breakers on his team. So I, I just don't see that helping him too much. And yeah, not to repeat anything else that you said. Yeah. Uh, I, I also, I give him a six, actually. Um, I think that his team just overall is not a very quick team. And uh, in order to... to deal with that with most opponents he may find himself relying on sticky web uh, pretty often um and if he can't get that up or can't keep it up 
uh, he might run into some issues with being outsped. That's what she said. <laughs> 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 oh god. <laughs> hey, just I mean, he's got, uh, yeah, I think there's just a, just a quick comment as well. Like, he's, Serene is not too bad, and, and Tableye's got that prankster option as well, but I think the speed is. It's sort of lackluster, I think, is the, the, where I'm trying to go with, yeah. with my score. His team looks nice on paper, but when you, you look at his speed tiers, you're just like, what is he going to do with this? Yeah. Uh, um, how do you feel about his wall breakers? I gave him a five for wall breaking. Um, there's again, you're looking, you're looking at Volker and Worth up, and like those are, the, I think those two will be the two he brings consistently to try and do to, to provide his damage output. Rodan will do some damage too, and same with Incineroar. Like those two um, transitioning into each other with U turns or party shots or vault switches, I think those will do really, really good things to, with each other. Um, but I think what he's, I think what he'll be relying on, and I, and I know Ryan will do this because this is how he fights. He will be relying a lot on Toxic. Um, he's not, not maybe not necessarily Toxic stalling because he's only on twenty minute timer. But he will rely on Quagsire, uh, Save Line, and bring on to provide that Toxic support. Um, oh, you know, Witch protecting, wishing off into, um, you know, Incineroars and Slurp offs to try and get that. That um, damage out, like to be able to get himself into a position where he can set up with that um, belly di- belly drum. I'm and so go glad there. I'm not in the other division. Oh fuck all <clears> that noise! <laughs> but I think I think being able to do that consistently will be very difficult for him. And um, I think uh, the wall breaking is in and of itself not there. He needs set up to be able to do it. So five. Yeah, I, I agree. I just don't see anything on his team that screams, I'm going to Oko the shit out of you. So, I I mean, Slurpuff can, but again, needs the belly drum, and that can be easily thwarted. Uh, Volcarona needs at least two Quiver Dances to Oko Pokemon in most cases. Uh, Rotomosh, maybe a Specs can do some good damage, but I mean, again, you're, you're stuck in one move if you do that. Uh, Gujra as well, but then again, they don't have the speed to, I don't know. I know they can't sweep, and this is wall breaking, so, but still, five five for me. Yeah, I, I give him a six uh, for wall breaking, uh, maybe being a, a tad bit generous, but um, I, I, I agree for most of the same reasons. I, I think that some of these mons do have the potential to do some wall breaking um but i feel like uh if he's going up against a team that's utilizing taunt he's gonna have some serious issues in terms of wall breaking uh he he looks like he requires setup for for just about any of his wall breakers and uh uh what do you, how do you feel about team synergy uh Jaden? I gave him a seven for Team Synergy. I think I know Ryan's battle style. I know what he's going to do. It's a painful process battling Ryan, um, and he takes great pride in that. In that, um, and he's drafted teams to be able to execute his vision of you know. You can't trust a man like, who enjoys defensive. Stuff. Yeah, no, and you can't trust the Kiwi either, which is where he's from. So, oh, Stewart. Uh, Control your people. Yeah, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, <laughs> like he plays. He plays. He plays very defensive, and he's drafted Pokemon to execute that defensive strategy, which he's which he's good for. Um, so I think a seven is a good overall um, good overall score. Yeah, I just gave him a six. Um, overall team looks good. It it can volt turn. I mean, yeah, it could bolt turn. It has good. It has a good fire water grass core. Almost completes the, the uh, dragon fairy steel, and that's what I think his team is missing is a very good steel type. Because yeah, he likes to play the toxic stall game and stuff, but he can easily be reversed in that as well. Because mo- he doesn't have anything who- that can really stop uh, toxic other than Umbreon with Hillbell. And if he loses that, 
and the rest of the team gets toxic, they can be worn down pretty good, and that could put some trouble on his team. Yeah, I, uh, I gave him a seven uh, as well. Um, I agree with Jaden. I think that uh, this team will require a good amount of prep, uh, attention to detail, you know, in terms of looking at your opponents uh, and just uh, the skill to utilize these mons properly. It sounds like, uh, just based on your history with him, that he does have the skill to utilize these mods properly. So um, perhaps he's drafted a, you know, a very good team. Uh, but overall, I just think uh, it's it's about a seven in terms of synergy. Honestly, if he dropped in Center War for a really good skill type in uh, tier two, that that could really boost his team up quite a bit. Maybe if he drafted like a uh, traded for like a Lucario or something, <clears throat> that might help out, I'm... in my opinion. All right, so here's like... what you do: you you drop in Cinnaroar. Right, and you, you're you gonna have to move some stuff around, right? But you drop Incineroar and Umbreon, you pick Umbreon back up with your T2 choice, and with your wildcard pick, you pick up Corviknight or Celestila. Mm -hmm. well, Celestila, Celestila is a great fire tool, yeah, it's a good one. <clears throat> yep, yeah. all right, Ryan, if you're listening to this, um, don't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I think uh, you can beat him at his own game since he doesn't have a steel type and nothing that can really stop that outside of Umbreon with Hill go. Yep, no, I agree. 